Hi, welcome to another episode of Jay Grey Codes. Guys, what do you do when the sun's out and the weather's just all beautiful? Do you jump around? Yes? No? Uh, just me? Leave a comment below. This is the second part on how to create XPath. Today, we'll be talking about XPath access. These include child, following sibling, parent, and so much more. If you're new to the topic of XPath, then remember them by what we refer to as page objects. These are different objects that allow you to interact with elements on a web page. This could be clicking a button, typing into a text field, and so much more. If you've missed the first part on how to create XPaths, then click on the link above. There, I talk about how to create basic XPaths. And if you're new to my channel, I look forward to you subscribing and becoming a part of my Grey family. Let's dive in. Okay, so we're going to talk about XPath access and the ones that we're going to focus on today are following, ancestor, child, preceding, following sibling, parent, and descendant. Okay, so if we go back to the web page, we're still focusing on check availability button. Okay, I get rid of all of that. Let's create actual XPath for the button, first of all. We have following, and this is an example. Okay, so we want to find the next tag that has, should I say, that is input, for example. So in this case, I want to find the next tag that's, the, that's a div. So if I do dash dash following, Colon, colon, and div. You can see it found 59. Wow, that's a lot. But let's, I wanted to find the one straight after this specific XPath that targets this button. I can put one. And right there, you can see check availability. And then the next div is right there. So that's for following. In terms of ancestor, ancestor basically target everything above this this X path for check availability. Okay, so everything above. So if I put dash dash ancestor colon colon and let's say div, you can see it's found all the div above it. Okay. So once again if I put one you'll find the one that's right above it. The first one right above it. Okay. It's quite handy. And that's ancestor in terms of child. All right, so in terms of child, so let's say if we go back to this X path, this is below this div. So in this case, this check availability is the child of this div class nef search options. So to double check that, how about we target this div? I'm going to put that there. Okay, change this to div. And you can see we have this, okay? So below it, you can see this is a sibling, it's a child. Sorry, this is a child. It's right beneath it. And there's a span, okay? So if I was to put dash dash child colon colon span, see it targets that, yeah? Just like that one of one. The next is proceeding. Okay, so if I do proceeding, it should find me before the check availability. So if we go back to check availability, get rid of this. Sorry. Okay, you can see all the diff before before check availability. And that's yep, yeah, that's the proceeding. And in terms of following sibling, following sibling basically works on the same level. Okay, so get rid of that for example, and we want to find this button again, check availability. So 
right now this doesn't have a sibling there's nothing else that's on the same level as it so let's go back to the parent let's treat the parent as our target once again and i want to find the following sibling so in this case this div and this div are on the same level so the following sibling would be this div so let's try that dash dash following sibling long column div as stated it's the next one after the initial one that we targeted okay and parent as we've already demonstrated if we target this check availability again for the parent to find the parent this time i'm using rather than text or rather than this button i'm using this span span class bup button find and then the parent will be this div so if i dash put dash dash parent finally the the, per, the next parent with a div tag there you have it right there it's the next one above that's the parent that's the mummy <laughs> yeah mummy j and child j or child jj hey okay? all right so the descendant should get me everything for descendant we will need to change this to descendant and div will not be found simply because this specific x path doesn't have any tags underneath it containing div so in other words all it has is button so after this this level the next one is button I put button to find it perfect it's not that so let's say I wanted to use this level so this nav search options okay so if I replace this with that and I change it to star or any tag you can see that once again button is one okay so let's say I wanted to use, change this to span underneath it around underneath it is the span let's say I wanted to use div let's see what happens nothing because the descendant is not, there's no diff there. And that is the descendants for XPath access. As you can see, all these different XPath access are really of great use. It's just about knowing when to use them, how to use them. But once you start using them, you start getting the hang of, you know, how impactful they are. Okay, so they might look scary at first, but trust, they're quite easy, you know. I've kept it quite simple, but you're more than welcome to ask any questions below. Okay, I'm always here to help. Thanks for watching guys. I'm sure you really found it useful and you now know exactly how to create XPath objects and you can now automate the web. If you're new to my channel guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you're a returning member of the Gray family, don't forget to like, to comment, to share to all your friends and families. For now, peace, love and unity. Ciao.